fake or counterfeit cards is spreading throughout the community at an all time high. This is the second installment of this series, and it's aimed at educating you and providing some tips on how to protect yourself from these fakes. Let's talk counterfeit magic cards. So in our previous episode, we opened up this pack of cards and sort of took a look, evaluated and sort of gave our first impressions of these sort of six generation fake cards. Uh, since then, uh, I've also now have an opportunity to look at the most recent ones, which is the seventh edition. Um, and we'll talk more about specifics of these in our third and final video, as well as go through and give a bunch of different tips on how to protect yourself from these counterfeits. So I shipped off some of the sixth generation counterfeit cards, fake cards, proxies, whatever you want to call them to Daniel Chang over at Vintage Magic for him to sort of review and kind of give his thoughts as well as just ask a few questions. So without further delay, why don't I go ahead and let's roll the interview that I did with Daniel Chang. So today I have Daniel Chang with me, which uh, from VintageMagic.com. He's the uh, president, CEO, owner, and uh, you run a YouTube channel too, right? Yes, president CEO, and also guy ships all the labels out. That's that's me. <laughs> Quality control. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel also. Yeah, I, I find that very interesting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, 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 um, if you if you guys have not uh, subscribed to Daniel, like his his content is 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 very fun. I like uh, I like watching your content and uh, thanks, man. You get to see uh, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. I like your uh, when you talk about the uh, the art too, like. I, I really love the art of magic. I have ever since I started playing. And um, so uh, those those segments are kind of cool, too, because you kind of go into like, you know, you know, the history and, and so on and so forth. And, and you, you show a lot of, you know, passion like for, you know, the game, which is, I think, very important, especially as a collector and, and people who play. Well, th thanks, thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, I mean, what you said is the right word. It's passion. I um for me magic is all about that I, I i actually in fact whatever i do in life is for passion um i think a lot of people you know obviously when we're talking on the internet and maybe one day we'll meet um and um i i think a lot of people they live their lives just kind of day to day and not really doing the, what they want and i've been lucky enough to be the blessed to have an opportunity to do something that I really love. And yeah, like you said, the art is incredible. I mean, without magic art, um, the, the card would just be like a Pokemon card. Right. It'd basically be like, it'd basically be like the, the, uh, the Ket cards, honestly, the invocations, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think, yeah. So, I mean, it, you know, in a way it, it's, it's just, um, I, you know, I have a, there's a lot of facets to magic that I really appreciate. Um, there's obviously controversial topics that we're not going to go into today that I don't appreciate about how it's gone. But for the most part, I stick with the passion of why I love the game so much. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. So uh, the reason why I had you on was, uh, you know, I there's been a lot of counterfeits, obviously, and um, floating around the Internet. And, um, you know, it it's it's getting more and more um sort of airplay um many youtubers have been getting um sort of sent fakes as well as to myself to look at them to review them because they want to generate business right just like any other business but um what my goal is i want to not only talk about these but i want to sort of provide education to help people protect themselves from counterfeits how can you how can you discern a, a, a counterfeit versus a, a real one? And and I have some basic uh, lo-fi things to do. I guess the first question I have is, is, what's your thoughts about the counterfeit problem currently in Magic the Gathering? Like, are you, do you think it's bad? Do you think it's fine? Do you think it's neutral? You know, how? what's your thoughts and how do you feel about it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I looked at the cards you gave me and... Uh, if you're asking the like overall perspective of counterfeit cards. Obviously, I don't um, I don't like them. Um, sure. In fact, some people consider them as proxies. Now, if you're just 
if you're playing with the cards with your casual group and you're just you don't have you can't afford the cards i understand that right that's different you know you just want to play and have some fun um and old school magic you know i mean we play old school magic quite a bit and if they don't have the cards they either take like a, a land and they write ancestral recall whatever a real magic card but there are people that have proxies and whatever, and they're fine. You know, that's what they could, they can afford, and I get that. Uh, the problem with counterfeits that come along is when you start reselling them or you right. start uh, claiming that you got them from a friend and you basically are lying about what the provenance. And I'll, I'll say this, like, we'll be at Grand Prix Las Vegas uh, 2018 next, not this week, but next week. So basically June 14th to June 17th. Is that right? Yeah, June 14th, Thursday to June 17th. So basically the reason why I bring that up is that if you guys are going to the show, uh, I have a guest. His name is Tavis King, a prominent misprint collector, probably one of the biggest in the world, and magic historian. And this guy, I mean, came to Rudy's uh, Rudy from Alpha Vestments card shop flipped out this binder, like literally a huge-ass binder of just misprints, rarities, talked about all this knowledge. I I don't know if you saw that video. I did. I did. I mean, the video, the time amount of time, right, that was on the video, I mean, he could have talked for for days, right? So uh, I'm inviting him back to the Grand Prix because – to the Grand Prix because I want people to bring their collections. And also, if you are concerned about counterfeits, he is – you know, I consider myself an expert, but he is like, like you know, Stephen Hawking. You know, like you know, genius <laughs> level of, of experts, right? So I'm just a little piddly guy, right? So, um, but in general, counter. So if you're going to the Grand Prix, uh, Chris is going to for, uh, put the link below, and if you're going, uh, be sure to uh, bring us the cards, tell us the provenance. But back to what I was saying. When I go to a Grand Prix, right, there's always Chris every single time. Every show I go to, there's always someone trying to sell fake cards. I think last year in the Grand Prix, someone tried to sell me a whole Power 9 beta run, uh, some dual lands and all that stuff. And to me, they were fake, obviously. But some of these gra- some of these fakes are getting really good. And I'm saying they're good as in I still see them. But to the average person that's never owned a Power 9, that's never touched dual lands that much, and if you're buying a massive collection and you're doing it as for speed, as some of these buyers are just doing it for, you know, like tons of cards. Yeah. Counterfeiters, what they do sometimes is they have lots of cards. They put real cards and fake cards. But they might leave some of the counterfeit cards in the sleeve and it's just piled in and they just they give them some of the real cards first. The buyer assumes that they're real and doesn't have the time because I mean, we're talking about crap load of cards. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So if you do that kind of game, right, you – if you're – let's say you're knowing you're knowing that your cards are fake, some of them, but you give them real cards at first. Basically what they're doing is they're putting them in stacks of values, and they – if they see that some of them are real already, they're going to go fast, Right. Mm-hmm. And then do values. So uh, now some buyers, the more educated ones, are actually going to check every card and do a little bit of you know analysis. But what I'm seeing in the marketplace is that the other problem that comes with counterfeits is what uh, what's going on is the people that don't know what's what they, if they're real or not, they're accepting them. Their buyers are buying them. Then the stores sell them. The end user says, oh, I got a real Ancestral Recall or a real Black Lotus or whatever, Tabernacle. And then you see this card and you're just like, you know, me as the appraiser, I'm more of the, you know, like expert party. And they ask me, hey, Dan, you know, I had this guy who sent me a bunch of Power 9 cards. I like, hey, I got this from a, a pawn shop. A pawn shop, red flag, by the way. Pawn shop, <laughs> Craigslist, keywords, red flag. And you're like thinking they're fake already. But – yeah, it breaks your heart because they don't understand and they don't even like bother to have the knowledge and the resources to go on YouTube to maybe a channel like yourself or other channels to look up what a real card and the discussion of what it is. So it 
becomes a really tough situation. You're talking about real money right now, right? Right. This is all about the money. The value of the cards is what makes the reason why the counterfeiting has been become more aggressive. People are counterfeiting cards because if you get away with a Black Lotus, uh, unlimited Black Lotus, and you get it passing through, you'll make thousands and thousands of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. $5,000 in some cases. And be aware, a lot of people take these counterfeit cards and they actually scuff them up. They mm -hmm. play with them, they make them dinged up, they make them look like they're played cards, which actually makes the counterfeit cards more uh, uh, like real. They're more resistant to possible checking, right? So yeah. if you go to a dealer, a vendor at a Grand Prix or whatever, and you have a lot of played Power 9, and they're played, and some of them are real, some of them are not, and you pass it through, it doesn't matter if you get, you know, I mean, they're probably not going to check them because if they're beat up and play and the few of them look real, I mean, granted, they'll, they'll, they'll just go through the system, right? Right. So anyway, to answer your question, to answer your question, uh, in summary, the world of counterfeit cards is the black market, as I say, is very dangerous. It's dangerous for the buyers, it's dangerous for the vendors, it's dangerous for the community. And those of you watching this video that think that they are getting a great deal, you should be warned every single time. One of the things that I um, learned in business very early is that if it smells like a rat, it is a rat. So if you have any question mark, if the card you're buying, like an Ancestral Recall Unlimited, should be mint condition around $1,800 to $2,000 range. And you're buying it for 50 bucks. For God flipping sake, it's fake. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay? But let's say you buy it and it's 1000 bucks, Right? Okay, you're thinking, well, maybe the guy's desperate, right? But the thing is, if it's not a real market price, I still think it's probably fake. There's a, there's a reason why, right? Yeah. So if you – and the other thing is if you have a question, you have a doubt, you smells like a rat, you need to ask an expert. Go to a, your LGL store. Go to players that have seen the cars before. Have them do all the tests involved. So, so now getting back to the cars that I sent you, like what are um... – what are your what are your thoughts on on the ones that I sent you? I think I um, I sent you some older ones. I sent you some a few newer ones. The very first thing I would say with these cards is the Magic Gathering back. The back of the cards is very shiny and glossy. Uh, the whole actually the entire um, thing you sent me was very glossy. In this particular case, if you look at the edge, I look at the edges of the card, meaning like the edges this way, yeah. not necessarily the flat way like this yeah like this. and one of the glaring things is that you can tell they're not double-sided double reback double re so that tells you something right there that some there's different kind of counterfeits there's counterfeits that are not well architected and made by design um and they're just glued on they're probably uh they're obviously like there might be a real magic gathering back and then there's a a, a photograph front and that's called a reback these were actually manufactured to be fakes. So one of the tests that I look for almost immediately on fakes is this poker deck sound. And I want you guys to listen. Hold on. Listen. Watch this again. Watch carefully. You guys hear that? So this reminds me a lot, and I don't do that with nice, uh, by the way, candelabras and Imperials. I don't do that to real cards, but that sound right there, the uniformity of poker deck, it makes me feel like I'm playing poker, right? Mm. Like I, I can literally shuffle, riffle shuffle these, and then and they'll they'll just shuffle really nicely, right? So that tells me right out of the gate that there's a, a question mark. The other test that I always do is the, the light test, and I'm not going to do it right here, but what you do is you take your phone on a flashlight, and you basically put the flashlight through the card. Right. Now, turn off the lights, you use your hands to kind of darken it up. The light test on this, the light does pass through in some fashion, but the rosette pattern is not consistent with the magic card. Uh, what is a rosette pattern? Um, there's a uniformity, or there's a card pattern 
that kind of goes through. It's I call you know rosette pattern also has to do with more of the looping of the card, and when you put a loop, there's like a pattern of the printing. So I didn't even do that test by the way because they look so flat that I could just tell that there wouldn't be much of a rosette pattern at all, like with consistency. But in terms of the light test, the paper pattern um, just there's no uniformity and what you usually do is you just take a real magic card and you basically do the test and you can kind of tell instantly sure um so but to answer your question out of all of these ones the one that's most damning to me actually is the imperial seal and the the newer misty rainforest uh the really on the veil like those scalding tarn these these four here tend to be the most, the best ones. And I say this because the new cards, now, again, the stock gives it away. Sure. But the printing quality and the resolution level is really good. Hmm. Especially the Imperial Seal. White border cards, I mean, if think about it this way. And I want you guys to understand something. If you were trading with someone at a Grand Prix or card shop or whatever, and you were, let's say you had no other people around. That's the worst thing you can do, by the way. I have no other opinions. You had to make a split decision on doing a trade in a deal. You have no other opinions you could quickly get. You can't call anybody. I mean, even if you call them, it doesn't matter, right? Because they're right there in front of your face. But once you make that trade and they're for these fake cards, you're completely, completely effed. This Imperial Seal, these Scalding Tar and Liliana, if you don't know, if you never owned one, you would think, shit, this card is actually very clean. It's, it looks right. Right. Especially if the play where, if this play where it's a little bit more matte versus glossy like this, mm -hmm. you'd be like, Chris, you'd be like, hey, this looks good. I'm going to get a lot of value for these trades, right? So that's the problem, is that I don't think people are educated enough in, in the way they should feel. And the newer cards, because the newer card stock, had these card stock, the, uh, the back coloring actually, looks more of the newer card stock. It's a little lighter. Sure. Whereas the older vintage cards, the Ancestral Recalls, the uh, Tabernacles, or uh, the Moat, or whatever you have here, uh, Candelabra, or whatever, those tend to be a darker back slightly, and more vintage-y feel, a little bit more matte. If you didn't know that, you would actually just trade it. You would buy it, whatever. And so the education becomes, I would say, recommendation in this case, is that you got to go to your LGS stores. Obviously, they should be reputable. And just look at the card stocks and get familiar with what they should look like, what they feel like, what they should bend like, right? There's a bending factor. What's really hard about this card is that, look at these cards. They bend really well. Watch this. Bend goes right back. Look at this. Yeah. It go back really nicely. Yeah. They're like poker decks, just like regular magic cards. Yeah. So that is my opinion. What you sent me, um, obviously to the common average person that has never owned any cards, they're going to get hosed. But for an expert, they're obviously fake. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but then it becomes on the sleeve. If these were sleeved up, this Mox Opal, this looks so good. Yeah. I mean, honestly... From a sleeve perspective, it's like 50 bucks or whatever, right? 75 bucks. So it's like Scars of Meriden. How do you know? How do you know if it's real or fake? And if you're too lazy as a player making trades, yeah. how do you know that, like, do you have the time? Do you have the discipline, right? Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So does Wizards... Uh, in your opinion, need to do something about these counterfeits? Is it is there something that a either Wizards can do, should do, and um, do they need to help protect their players, collectors, um, sort of you know collections? Is is I, I guess in short, is there something that Wizards needs to do in your opinion? Right. Uh, another great question. Uh, this question is who, where does the liability reside? Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, well, I mean, Wizards is doing something about it by putting that little hologram thing that they have. But the problem is the counterfeits now have the hologram. Yeah. Right. 
and it actually looked like the hologram. So, like, whatever Wizards did, they're still going to do it, right? Paper money, $100 bills. They've done all this intricate uh, watermarks and crazy little things, textures, whatever. People's counterfeiters still counterfeit. You know, things in life, like school shootings or whatever, like if you're going to do it, they do it, right? So the reality comes that they're criminals, and the criminals in this case, or the counterfeiters in this particular case, they're criminals to me. They, they don't respect the intellectual property of wizards or the community and the people. So is wizards liable or should they go after them legally? Well, first off, you have a problem. Number one, um, I think the company does recognize there's a problem in some way. Therefore, they've done these little measures of the hologram and tam tam tamper evident type of feel with their packaging. But I think ultimately, unless the feds, I, I really feel strong about this, unless the FBI treat, treats this like paper money, where people, unless enough people have been burned, mm -hmm. then I think you'll see a big change in the hobby. Think about this. Think about this very carefully to your viewers. If you, if money, if $100 bills, $20 bills, whatever, $1 bills, there's a lot of counterfeits. What would happen? The feds, the Secret Service does a has a money exchange has a money department too. They would investigate and go after this instantly. Right. Why is it that Magic the Gathering cards or even baseball cards or whatever Pokemon cards, there's no feds involved? The main reason why is that the amount of money lost in relativity to it's sad. This is sad to say. It's sad to amount of workload and stuff it would be astronomical. There hasn't been enough loss in this stuff. and the, 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 Luckily, the counterfeits aren't good enough that you can't tell. It's not a, it's not a systemic problem yet. Sure. It's a, it's, a, it's a problem, but it's not a problem where it would, it would destroy the marketplace because people still understand what counterfeits are. Right. But I do agree that if there was enough people that got financial loss to it, and there were a lot of lawsuits and class actions and complaints, I think Wizards and the Feds would have to work together on producing high collectible cards in a, you know. The other thing is that, you know, the problem with this is that I think once Wizards is the, Wizards is the manufacturer, once Wizards manufactures the cards, their level of liability is they can't control that. Sure. And yeah. Hasbro doesn't have an infinite amount of money in their legal department to basically go after, you know, some Chinese person, you know, basically printing it out. Because in China, the rules are different, right? Other sure. rules, the copyright rules are written. They, they fraud everything. They copy everything. Louis Vuitton bag. I mean, look at Louis Vuitton bags. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look at Gucci bags, right? That industry is rampant. Why isn't the feds, why isn't the... The international police going after that. I mean, because yeah, I mean, the because the laws in those countries don't have that yet. Yeah, they're allowed to change it up because these cards are similar, but they're different. They're not an exact copy. So in a way, you are breaking copyright laws, as in selling the product. They find you know interesting ways to do that, creative ways to do that. But in a way, these cards are not replicas. You're not taking the printing press mm -hmm. slate of Lily on the Veil and printing a machine that is exactly Lily on the Veil. You're not frauding that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, You're actually, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 not the same, and it's also not currency in the sense that the government has certain there's certain responsibilities that a government has to act on. Right. Right. Counterfeiting of money. Right. Gold. You know, like if gold was counterfeit at that level, they are more market accepted items, more commodities that everybody has. If a house was, you know, built wrong and all these houses were built wrong, the government has to act upon the housing network that was built wrong. If a baby seat was built wrong and they were crying deaths, right, they would have to act upon that. These magic cards do not cause deaths. They don't cause anything. 
They are just luxury gaming collectibles. And the flaws and the counterfeits don't really po pose a financial enough financial cause or enough hurt in the community that in the mainstream community to cause any change. That's my long-winded answer. Um, I'd like to hear from what you guys think. But great questions, Chris. Thanks for having me on the show, man. Really fun to be here. Yeah, I mean, thanks for for taking some time out. Uh, I know you're you're busy trying to get ready for GP Vegas. So um, uh, any any time you you uh, you're able to spend with me is uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and, yeah, anytime. Uh, and make sure and you I'll, guys. And, I'll, and, I'll, and guys, I will uh, try to get a video. I'll, I'll try to bring these cards. And uh, Chris sent me the envelope to mail to Rudy. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Rudy and I will have some free time in the beginning. And we'll do a video on this. Oh, cool. And uh, I might set it up so you have a Skype with Rudy maybe during the week. Um, yeah, and this way it uh, we get some interaction, his thoughts on it from his perspective. Some of them might be similar, but I think he's seeing a lot more counterfeits than I have uh, because people have been sending them in the mail quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I see them off and on. But Rudy's kind of made it a mission, right? Sure. To basically say, hey, you got counterfeits, send them to me. I want to know what's up. So I'll probably see you on that video. I'll wave hi or whatever. But I think that would be a good follow-up. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Yep. All right? All right, man. Thanks, Chris. Well, thanks, thanks hey, for man, your time. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And check out you're in GP Vegas. Don't be shy. Come say hello. If you got some ca cards you feel are counterfeit, they could be counterfeit, whatever, uh, do not be shy. Bring them over. We want to take a look at it and help you guys out. Thanks for watching. And I also want to thank Daniel for joining us once again and kind of just giving his thoughts and sort of his take on sort of the fakes that are going around right now. Let me know in the comments below if you have ever bought a card that was a counterfeit card or if you've had any issues uh, with catching counterfeit cards. I'd like to hear your stories. Um, Feel free also to email me your story. Uh, I, I'd be interested to hear any of them. And uh, I could, if with your permission, I, I would share them with the community. Um, any education that we can sort of bring about uh, with all this and sort of just, you know, give people tools or, or give people information on how to protect themselves. Uh, it just it just helps out the community. Also, officially, this video is going to launch our website, legendarymana.com. The link down below will take you to a page which has a plethora of different images and pictures that I've taken um, with all of these fake cards and comparing them to regular cards, including the Black Lotus. Um, so check the link out below, as well as Daniel Chang's website, vintagemagic.com. I will link to his website, his YouTube channel, and his Twitter uh, in the description below. Until next time, we will have our third and final video on this topic, which we will go in depth with some lo-fi uh, thoughts and ideas and how you can protect yourself um, with trading and, and buying cards that may or may not be counterfeit. So look out for that third video coming soon. Until next time, I bid you farewell.